Hey, Steve Sretsky here, as always, Canadian Real Estate Market Update with a particular focus on Vancouver. If you get sort of value entertainment out of these videos, all I ask you to thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, questions, comments, put those below. Um, I was kind of looking for what, what to talk about in this week's YouTube video, and I got gift wrapped a slew of data uh, here on Friday and some juicy comments from the Bank of Canada, uh, which we'll get into. But uh, I mean, first off, on the data print, uh, we've seen a lot of the household debt servicing information coming out uh, for the Q3. So the household debt service ratio printed a fresh record high in the third quarter of 2019. Basically, Canadian households debt servicing ratio is 15%. Um, so basically what this measures is, this is, in my opinion, probably one of the most important metrics to actually watch because you can accumulate a lot of debt, but if the interest rate is very low, obviously it, it's much cheaper to service that debt, right? Like, I mean, you think about it in simplistic terms, you take on a million dollar mortgage at a 5% interest rate, that's obviously, the, the payments are obviously much more burdensome than a million dollar mortgage at a 2% rate. So the household debt servicing ratio basically tracks um, that essential that ratio and so if we look at Canada for the third quarter again uh, here's the chart on on the household debt servicing ratio printing a fresh record high again despite interest rates basically being at rock bottom lows I mean again I believe that they can and they probably will go lower um, but it basically just goes to show you that despite interest rates being ex extremely low, the, the, the burdensome of the debt is, is mounting. And so, um, it, you know, we have to go back basically in the 1990s uh, when the debt servicing ratio was climbing at this pace. And that's when interest rates were uh, significantly, significantly higher. So basically what you do is you continue to accumulate more and more debt and by doing so, you're able to service that by continuously lowering interest rates. But as we're seeing, again, we're obviously getting close to that zero bound, uh, you know, negative interest rate territory. Um, but I think what the best part of all this is the Bank of Canada Governor Stephen Polos gave his comments on this. And uh, uh, my boy at BNN Bloomberg, Andrew Bell, I think caught him off guard uh, with a question that he wasn't prepared for. So I'm going to link to that interview right now. Governor Andrew Bell of BNN Bloomberg, um, in your speech today, you said the high household debt load is the most important risk facing the financial system. But aren't you the man who's to blame for that? You're the one, you're the candy man. You kept interest rates so low all those years. Didn't you? You're the main author of that bubble, aren't you? Well, um, I guess uh, a lot of things may have contributed to it, Andy, but um, certainly I would say, say that keeping interest rates low, as, as many countries have had to do for over 10 years now, but if we go back to 2008, 9, 10, we had a lot of uh, fiscal action at the same time as, as uh, you know, a monetary stimulus. And then uh, globally, we, we saw enough of a recovery at that time in 2010 that Governments decided, well, okay, uh, we got things back on track. So uh, they began consolidating the fiscal side, and uh, monetary policymakers, you know, figured we'd we'd be coming out of it too. But then the world economy faltered again, and uh, as I said, we had that sort of uh, the period that we called, uh, you know, serial disappointment. And uh, it's in that phase that monetary policy kind of got stuck in this uh, very stimulative place, offsetting headwinds that are hard to really quantified by, by conventional analysis, but they're obviously there, even though the Canadian economy is at full employment, more or less, and inflation's on target. We're there, but with really low interest rates still from a historical standpoint. So those low interest rates are still stimulating against some contrary force. So, uh, I mean, I think uh, the fact that inflation is on target today suggests that the Bank of Canada has done its job. Now, uh, if there are side effects, and one of them that you're mentioning, uh, well, that's those are you know there are secondary effects. They are not our prime mission. Our prime mission is to stabilize the economy and keep inflation on target, and we've succeeded with that. We've introduced we being the broader we uh, macroprudential measures to try and uh, deal uh, with uh, financial vulnerabilities, and they have succeeded. Um, so now we know that every new mortgage that is created 
is far more sustainable than mortgages that were being granted uh, before those changes. And that gives us confidence that as things move along, even if debt continues to rise, the sustainability of the stock of debt is improving every week. I don't know if anyone else noticed uh, Stephen Polo's caught off guard stumbling out of the gates on that question. Uh, I think one thing is the media is nobody ever wants to question you know, the central bank's policies and, and, and what they're ultimately doing. I mean, these guys are essentially, they are the people at the helms that price money. It is such an important job to effectively, interest rates are a tool to put uh, and a judgment on the price of money. And so uh, what we see from, from Polos is obviously, he knows that he is in fact uh, responsible for the accumulation and the vulnerabilities that have been created through record high household indebtedness. And um, I think that, you know, as we, what's interesting to talk about is, is Polos talks about these macro prudential policies that have been put in place, i.e. the mortgage stress test. And earlier this week, just two days ago, we had the president at the Canadian Real Estate Association saying that we need to start tweaking and, and amending the stress test, that it is hurting Canadians, that it's like punitive that Canadians aren't able to continue to borrow. Meanwhile, the household debt servicing ratio hits an all time high, despite mortgage rates at 2.7%. Um, and if you look at Canadian households indebtedness, I mean, they're some of the most indebted households in the G20. Um, so clearly the Canadians, I would argue that credit has been too easy for too long. And obviously Mr. Polos is well aware of that. Um, but this is the era of, of central banking. And it's so important to understand that I think that the rule book and the playbook has, has changed and obviously it becomes much more difficult to invest and navigate an asset. So, I, I mean, all we have to do is look at the, the US Federal Reserve, who I mean, I would argue basically sets the Bank of Canada's policy rate effectively. The BOC is just a, a bystander. Uh, but, you know, you have today, you have stocks at all time highs. You have housing prices, even in the US, at basically all time highs. Uh, you have the longest economic expansion in history, 125 months. You have a uh, record low, a fi sorry, a 50 year un unemployment rate, a low 50 year low in unemployment uh, at 3.5%. And the Fed just cut three times and grew their balance sheet by $335 billion over the past three months. Again, don't call it QE. Um, it is effectively a permanent repo operation that is essentially going to turn into um, prolonged and continued quantitative easing, i.e. QE4, uh, which is going to basically uh, attempt to continue to inflate asset prices because asset prices are now, um, financial markets are the central bank's mechanism for uh, monetary policy. It's their way to basically input um, monetary policy it's a way to it's the transmission mechanism um you know again you have to you can lower interest rates but in order to have those feed through into the real economy their transmission mechanism is now financial markets and so that's why we have seen the recent actions and that's why we see um the i would argue uh you know just how manipulated the markets have become and so we talked about earlier you know canadians record high household debt Bank of Canada's polo saying, well, you know, our inflation target, it was 2%. Uh, we've basically hit our target, so don't worry. You know, we can't control what, what the side effects are. But meanwhile, I think anyone uh, real, any real person would, would certainly tell you that, uh, you know, this 2% inflation is, is much, much higher. I mean, unless you're living in, you know, the suburb uh, rural Canada, then you know you might have a two percent inflation but if you're in any large metro city in canada inflation i would argue uh is at least double maybe triple uh, uh, what they're saying is two percent i mean certainly housing and shelter costs which makes such a large component um of people's everyday lives is, is growing by basically double digits so um but again this is understanding sort of where we are uh, sort of, I think, is an important framework for making decisions. Um, 
And I think that's pretty much all I have on this topic. But obviously a very interesting week um, to see those de those statistics come out, to see Polo's response and actually come out of the gun. And now to see, uh, we actually also saw um, that uh, Justin Trudeau, uh, recently ele elected Justin Trudeau, is encouraging and asking Finance Minister Bill Morneau to uh, consider reviewing and potentially amending the mortgage stress test. Now again, I don't really know what that means. Um, I would argue that there's potentially a few things you might could tweak, such as renewals and having the ability to switch lenders without having to be stress tested. Uh, but if you're thinking and talking about you know, lowering the qualifying rate on the stress test, removing it in certain cities, um, again, I think is a mistake, but obviously I think policy making has been a complete fumble, um, particularly over the past decade. So I definitely wouldn't put it past them because again, the transmission mechanism um, of basically monetary policy and for that part, almost fiscal policy is essentially through uh, financial markets. So. Hope that helped. Otherwise, see you next week.